Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for our weekly webinar series. Today, our future topic is selecting cable management systems. My name is Jessica Petrovoy, and I'm the marketing coordinator at fiberoptic.com. Fiberoptic.com is the leading provider of fiber optic products, training, and rental equipment. We're pleased to present this topic to you today. Now, with us today to talk about cable management systems is Adam Goth. Adam is a technical engineer for fiberoptic.com sales and services. Adam will be discussing the types of cable management, features to consider when either retrofitting or planning a new systems, and the benefits of good cable management. When Adam is finished, we'll take questions from the GoToWebinar question box at the bottom of the screen for a question and answer session. And remember, our webinars are posted online at fiberoptic.com slash webinar. So thank you again for joining us today. At this time, I turn the presentation over to Adam. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Jess, for that introduction. I always appreciate working with you and look forward to working with you on future webinars. Uh, this is my third webinar, and uh, this today we are going to be talking about selecting cable management systems. Uh, we're going to go over, to be honest, um, the ins and the outs of really how to set you up. Um, get you, whether you're a beginner, whether you're a novice, whether you are 15 years in the telco uh, industry and uh, you know, well-weathered well and long in the tooth and know what's going on. Uh, there's always some good, good little changes in the industry that you may be able to uh, benefit from, from this uh, webinar. So once again, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for having us, fiberoptic.com, uh, to go over some of this webinar training for you. Uh, the rollout of new protocols to get right in and dive into it, and high-capacity systems is creating fiber networks that can handle increasing amounts of traffic, representing to the end user more revenue than ever from a single fiber strand. It's amazing the revenue that's really generated just from uh, one single fiber strand. And then you figure uh, that you can have cabinets where you have hundreds upon thousands of single fiber strands and all the technology, money, and everything that's flowing up and down. Um, but along with the increased capacity um, comes increased risk. That's just the way most things go. Loss of a single fiber not only means loss of revenue, but also the potential to lose valuable customers in today's competitive environment. And that's the truth. You know, it's what have you done for me lately? Okay, the service was great for five years, but my connection for the sixth year has not been that great. Um, your customer service, you haven't been, when we would go down, you haven't gotten me back up. You know, we're going to look at somebody else to, uh, to, you know, work on our cable management and maintenance systems. Our agenda today, what we're really going to dive into is the adaptability to change, the maximum protection, because that's really what, what selecting a cable management system really is, you know, maximizing your protection. It's protecting your cable, whether it's Cat5 or Cat6 or if it's fiber. And there's some very big differences and distinct differences between uh, the CAT5 and CAT6 and, and fiber. And we're going to dive into that a little bit, um, but we're really going to try and focus on the cable management systems. But, you know, we do want to address how there are differences between uh, different types of cable systems uh, and, and, you know, what you happen to be working with. Um, the ease of use and making sure it's customizable and the customer service availability. That's, you know, okay, we have the cable management system set up, our system set up and running. Um, now how is it going to be serviced? Who's going to service it for, uh, you know, going forward? Um, that's something that's, that's extremely key. So it's not just, uh, you know, the setup, it's also the monitor and review uh, going forward. If everything's up and running and fine, that's great, that's wonderful, but there's usually a reason for that, and that's because of proper maintenance, proper upgrades, and uh, you know, a, a good customer service. So those are going to be the four areas we're really going to address. From those four areas then, we're going to kind of 
take manage, cable management really seriously and kind of dive into some of the different ways to help you out. Um, you know, the pitfalls, stay away from them. And, uh, and the other areas, little quick saves, like I said, from a novice to somebody that's, you know, been in the business for a long time, we're going to kind of help you out and gear you down those paths. So what I'm really going to try and focus on uh, with giving personal experiences and, and uh, uh, some, some life stories that, that I've gone through and dealt with dealing with some large Fortune 500 companies, dealing with uh, copper cable or, or fiber. Um, the one thing I did realize and, and come across is that if you correct, have the correct system, you're going to have a long, long life for your fiber system. Uh, cable management system and your your copper system. When choosing a cable management equipment to ensure a long-term network use, you want to consider the four areas that I addressed before. The adaptability, the cable protection, the ease of use, and the customer service. Having it easier to service clearly is an advantage to the end user. Um, what that does is it lowers the cost over time dramatically. If you are not having maintenance calls to come out and fix uh, connections, um, there's going to be costs there. If the cable management system was set up properly where even when you have to come out for um, you know, some upgrades or, or um, manage the system, it'll be easy to uh, get to, accessible, you'll know which fibers you're looking to test, which uh, CAT5 or CAT6 you're looking to make sure you have power through. Um, that What that ends up breaking down is you're going to end up having a profit, a much higher profit. You know, no service interruption. No service interruption, you're, you're at, at peak numbers. You're, you're making, making large amounts of money. Um, whether it's you're setting it up or you're the one that's benefiting from it, um, which of course then generates higher higher revenues. And that's when it breaks down to, you're going to hear me talking about money a couple of times, and uh, if you get the correct system, if you do it right, you're going to equal a long life, no service interruption, higher profit, which will generate higher revenues. And we're going to be talking about money because Fiber and Cat5 and Cat6, the copper, is very, very expensive. And uh, if you do it right and you go uh, the extra country mile and spend a little more money, which a lot of times you should do, um, you're going to get the best performance, the best connectivity, and once again, you're going to make the best money. Um, so, you know, just some key things that from, you know, from ground zero to, you know, you're on the uh, 58th floor um, in the Empire State Building, it, it's, you know, it, it's words to live by. Breaking into part one of our webinar, we're going to start discussing the adaptability to change. Um, when I say the adaptability to change, it... <laughs> You know, what this webinar is designed to do is to give you a few simple guidelines into how to follow these guidelines, which will provide you with an ideal system that best fits your needs. That's going to cover cost, that's going to cover labor, which is included in your cost, but it's going to cover uh, the vendors that you deal with, why you want to deal with them, when you know when one vendor may be offering you a similar price at a lesser cost, but then their customer service on their end is not really there because they happen to be foreign instead of domestic. And that's not to say that people that we work with overseas um, don't you know have wonderful customer service. It's just you need to know the right vendor um, to work with to, to get you through on those different areas. And that sometimes adaptability to change. Sometimes you have to change vendors to, to get with the right people uh, to take care of you and get you where you need to be. Once again, I said I'm going to you know dive into a couple uh, personal stories here and personalize this webinar a little bit so people can kind of really relate and think, kind of visualize, oh wow, that, that's what he means 
when he's going through this. Instead of kind of just reading off the page here, um, you know, I'm going to try and give uh, you know uh, my own personal two cents. The one thing from being you know sitting behind the desk, uh, being on the sales side, being on you know from actually out in the field. Um, you know, constructing some of these different cable management systems from CAT5 to CAT6, from maintenance to actually uh, full builds, um, from big places like the Susquehanna Center to uh, the mall up in Rhode Island um, that everybody knows, the Mall of America practically. Um, it's, it's just something that's, that's very interesting with fiber we know. Uh, we always have to be uh, adaptable to change. Um, with fiber, techs always have to be able to adapt. Every job that I've gone on, uh, there's not one that's really the same. You always have to, there's always one thing or another uh, that you run into that's something that's a little odd. With buildings, with whether the ceilings are uh, cathedral ceilings or you're, you're working in a basement or a, a particular tower happens to be in a wooded area and so certain things are difficult to get access to. You know, it's, you have to be adaptable and you have to be adaptable for your cable management also. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. Um, sometimes you want to go for that higher priced item and uh, unfortunately you have to go with the products that are available and you go with the product that's a little um, I don't want to say below your standards, but you would require something more along a lot armored line. Um, and unfortunately, that's not available. You need something that's there. So you have to be adaptable to change. Um, a cable management system that should be easily adaptable to whatever new expansion or change lies ahead, because they always do. Um, while maintaining the ability to retrofit into existing systems. Um, with fiber, that could simply mean for people that are well weathered, um, you know, an SC to an LC. So just going with a, a, a slightly smaller connector, but having to take that all out, having to splice that to redress a whole cabinet. I mean, things like that, um, you have to be adaptable. If that's what a client wants, that's what your company needs, that's what you need to do. If you look at today's environment, the only true constant in our environment, honestly, today is change. Um, you just kind of have to roll with the punches, and things are going to con continually change. Uh, we think that LCs are small, uh, you know, as far as connectors go. Uh, that's there's going to be something smaller out, you know, that that's on a more regular basis used uh, that will take over for the LC. Um, things are always advancing, getting better, quicker, faster. Um, retrofitting can be extremely costly and time consuming if not planned ahead of time. Some companies, when they go and set up cable management systems, just so when they bid for jobs, specifically say, well, I know I have this fiber and this CAT5 uh, available. It's not what I want. I know I may have to replace it in five to ten years, um, but you know that that's something that uh, we're planning and putting in the budget, and, and we plan on coming back and doing this job again in another five years. The client might not know that, but that's something that uh, you know the project manager is aware of and, and things that are considered. So. Um, and that sometimes the client then may not even want to go back and, and have the upgrade or have uh, their system updated to the way, way it should be and simply because of the extreme cost. So they'll deal with a little bit slower connectivity, a little bit slower speed just because the upgrade uh, to retrofit to, to uh, higher grades and higher performance is just too costly. And they don't feel, you know, they figured that they're uh, their system would last them for 10 years and, and they wouldn't have to consider, you know, upgrading. Um, so, you know, things to consider. You have to be uh, able to adapt as a tech yourself. You have to be a, a, able to adapt in, uh, in the field looking to, uh, you know, land bids and, and uh, get quotes through um, with having the products that are available to you. Maximum protection. Protection is what cable management system is all about. You have to be adaptable to go ahead around a 90 degree bend and, and make sure that that 
bend is not going to affect the connectivity or, or there's going to be a loss of light with the fiber. Um, so you have to make sure you protect it correctly and, uh, and you, you manage the cable in those areas correctly. Um, possibly the most important is the protection for fiber and copper cables. There are many companies out there that offer uh, fiber management protection. However, you've got to choose wisely. Just because, like I was saying before, uh, you can get a thousand feet of fiber at a certain cost, but you know it doesn't have an armor, or it is not, uh, you know, and it's an indoor fiber, and you're using the indoor fiber on an outdoor job just because it's what you had available, it's quick, it's easy. Um, nine times out of ten, uh, and, and I mean, everybody's had to do it you know, on time, but it's going to break down if it's uh, outdoor and it's uh, used indoor. That's, that's not a problem, but there's a higher cost for it um, because there's more protection, waterproofing, you know, whatever, what have you. Um, so it's it's cheaper products in the long run can really end up uh, being being a costly uh, costly to you, um, and I say cheaper because I mean it, it, the proper word is to say inexpensive, but when you buy a cheaper product, I like to kind of say it as it is, um, you know you pay for what you get. So sometimes it makes a little more sense to go with an armored cable. Um, with Cat5 and Cat6, usually you're pretty safe there. But even a Cat5 and Cat6, depending on the pool, how long the pool is, what you're going through, uh, is the conduit already used? Is there existing cable going through that conduit? You know, can you remove that? There's there's a lot of different things to uh, to address. Um, cr critical bend areas can be extremely detrimental to your network performance if not properly protected. I've seen plenty of times just on pools alone um, pulling unarmored fiber and if the pools happen to be a long, long, um, like over a hundred feet or longer, I've seen if there's not a lot of room in the conduit, um, I've seen the fiber damaged. I've seen it come out uh, like braided hair I've seen it get nicked once. Fiber is very strong. It's very, very durable. But if you nick it, then all, all, all bets are off. You know, you're not going to get proper network performance. You may not get any network performance. Um, and although fiber is strong, it's very, very strong. Some say it, it's gotten uh, even stronger than some Cat5 and Cat6 you're still going to have weight-bearing issues. If you have high, high weights on, or large amounts of fiber all lying on itself. And we're going to show some pictures here um, where you'll see how um, we used Velcro to eliminate some of those weight-bearing issues, uh, to eliminate some of the stress and duress that that fiber or Cat5 can come under. So copper can be, be very forgiving. I've seen copper get boogered up and, and banged up pretty bad. Fiber's not forgiving. It can be durable. It can be extremely resilient. Um, you can you know, do some interesting pulls with it. But unless it's armored um, and you nick it, you know, you're going to have DB loss, and it, it's when set by the standards, set by the company and, or the industry, you have to hit those, those DB standards. And uh, if you don't, then you're going to have to end up re-pulling the whole job or, or redoing the cable um, on the fiber side. Um, and that can be extremely costly, not from just uh, the fiber itself, but also the man hours to do it, um, the cost to redeploy all of those people. It's just it, and the project management time. It, it can be can be a big headache. So, maximum protection is something that's extremely extremely important. The keys are watching for critical bend areas, 90 degree angles, um, small tight confined areas. Um, 
it's going to affect and show up as, as DB loss. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that you have to address and you have to look into. Next is number three, the ease of use, customization. And when I say customization, I, I, I really do mean it. Um, each system is different. There really is no, no two systems alike. Not one. Every, every time I've gone to, I mean, you can have similar systems. You can have similar buildings, but there's always one thing or another that, that you have to address, that you have to uh, properly uh, dress, um, protect. It, it's just everything. There's always something that's different. So there's no two uh, jobs alike. So you always have to customize. Um, in today's day and age, time is money in the fiber world. That can't be any more true than in the fiber world. You got to be quick, fast, easy installation, and customization really is the key to cost savings. It, it, it's just, I, I can't stress it enough. You know, that's, that's just, if you have straight runs, a few bends, there's always bends. And that's something that they, if they're 90 degrees, you really got to address it, you really got to work with it. You know, um, and small amount of cutting, small amount of splicing, um, the labor costs will be low and the system will function extremely well. You know, it, it's, uh, costs will be high and the connectivity will require possible service with multiple bends, splicing, and cutting. Anytime you have a lot of bends, anytime you have a lot of splicing, I don't care if the guy's been splicing for 15 years, I don't care if he's the best splicer you've ever talked to, you ever dealt with, it, it's, and, and cutting, you're going to have connectivity issues. You'll get it to pass. That, that's, that's, you know, that, that'll happen. You'll get it to pass because the company needs it to happen but it's just not going to perform as well as if you had straight runs, only a few bends, and uh, you didn't really have to do much splicing, cutting, or you know, anything of that nature. So ease of use, customization, straight runs, that's what you want. That's the easiest to work with. That, that's wonderful. That's, that's what you love to see. But that, that's, that's just not reality. That's not the world. You know, when dealing with runs in, in uh, semicircular or oval sweeps, which are now common in many, many configurations, bend radius protection becomes even more critical, especially or particularly with fiber. It's just, it, it's just the way it is. It makes sense to really select a system that is quick and easy to install and customize. Rapid deployment for new network construction is important, and quick installation can result in significant cost savings. You really need to select a system that best meets the specific configuration with the least amount of cutting and adapting of parts, regardless of the number of turns, bends, and drops in a design. The more turns, bends, and drops in your design, and this is for more advanced, more project managers, but the more you have, you're gonna, you just, it's a rule of thumb, you're going to have issues with your connectivity. And if you don't have, plan on having those issues, then you're gonna have to plan on paying more labor to the guys to get it right, to have um, you know, the job function and the connectivity where their standards happen to be. I can't tell you how many jobs for Fortune 500 companies we've worked where they said, Adam, we're going to need you for five to ten days. Uh, five to ten days, okay. Providence, Rhode Island, sure. I have no problem. Sounds like fun. I'll go up. 
nice big ball went up. I believe the job ended up being three and a half to four months that I worked on it. And then um, they needed, needed me back in the office, so I, uh, I had to come back. Um, so the reason why I bring that up is because they needed it done, but because of the multiple bends, which, my goodness, there was 25 RU units and thousands upon thousands of feet of Cat 5 and Cat 6. It was, I mean, it's a six-story um, mall, may have been seven stories, and they were looking to increase their cell phone reception. It was an ama amazing building, but their cell phone reception was bad, and uh, one of the reasons was, was the cable management. Um, it, it was not set up in a proper way. There were other reasons also. So setting up the uh, 21 functional, soon to be 25 RU units was to help increase the speed and connectivity for the cell phone network, um, which you can imagine, you know, the young kids from young to old, everybody wants to have the access, accessibility to their cell phone in that big, beautiful mall. But uh, because of improperly um, planning their cable management systems and running into the simple multiple bends, splices and cutting, I felt bad for their splicers. We had to go, we had to have their splicers, sometimes a single fiber, go back and re-splice that single fiber eight to ten times. And I believe there was close to 4,500 separate fibers. Now, not every one needed to be re-spliced, but if you do a good splice and, you know, and then this was, everything was aerial, so you had to be on a, uh, a lift that took you literally um, two stories in the air. So, you know, and, and that was a one-person lift. Um, it's very interesting. There's just a lot that, as simple and as easy as you know, cable management is, it can be so extremely difficult, and you can run so so many little problems that can become big problems, and and uh, and that's just that's that's fiber, and that that's our our fiber world, and and uh, that's also Cat Five to Cat Six too. You know, you run into issues there, um, but that was just a little bit of a personal story for some things. Uh, that we ran into, um, and these are big jobs. These are big companies. This is AT&T, Verizon. I mean, these are companies that uh, you know wanted this done yesterday, and just because of some uh, um, inexpensive fiber, some um, you know improperly managed hung um, cable management systems, just some little issues end up becoming big and, and that could cost you know hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's when customer service, uh, which is number four, um, is kind of a big big part of, of the whole cable management system. Um, and when I say that, you know it, it depends on where, where your company works and, and what they happen to do. If you just do installs, um, then you know you'll be you know uh, installing the cable management system. But uh, our particular company doesn't just do installs, but we also do uh, maintenance. So with that Rhode Island job, we happen to be called in for uh, because the company that called us in they couldn't maintain um, the the new install. They needed testing. Um, and they had their splicers, but they needed to make sure that the test came through and, and they were getting the passing results that they needed to uh, from their customer. Um, so that's where customer service you know, comes into play. You want to make sure that the companies that you're working with uh, review their customer service capabilities. Um, the companies who you work with should be there when you need them. So, you know, our original agreement for the Rhode Island job for the mall was literally two weeks at most, um, and that was running into the worst case scenario. Um, I had a bet with my buddy. I said five bucks. I said we will be working till after Christmas easily, 
And uh, needless to say, I was five dollars richer. And uh, the job went, I believe, all the way into March. I was fortunate enough to uh, have the birth of my uh, uh, baby boy, Asher, and I was really excited about that. Um, but I had to come home because of that, so I couldn't finish the job. But, it, I mean, a simple job that was supposed to take only two weeks, be in and out. You know, you'll be home way before Christmas, won't even come to Christmas, and then we're working all the way into March. So the company we worked with knew that even though they only needed us for two weeks, we were going to be there with them and we were going to hold their hand until we crossed the finish line and, uh, and, and got that job done for them. Um, did I like working you know, uh, close to Christmas and, and Thanksgiving and stuff like that? No, but that's part of the job. We have to be adaptable. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, the setting up of a cable management system, testing it, placing it, whatever it happens to be, you got to be adaptable. Um, you you got to work because it has to get done. Um, companies need to have their systems in place, whether it's for security, for phones, for computers, for whatever it happens to be. They need that. There's no way, it, it's no different than if your plumbing is no longer working. If your water's not working, you have to have water in your home. It's no different than with our fiber world and our, our Cat5 and Cat6 world. You have to have the people that are going to be there for you when your system goes down. If your system never goes down, that's wonderful, but that's rare that that ever happens. Um, every system needs to be maintained. Uh, runners, Olympic athletes, hey, your wheels get run down. You know, your knees break down. Everybody, you know, you have to take vitamins and things. It's, it's no different with, uh, with uh, your, your systems. Um, you have to maintain them, and if you set them up properly, and then the maintenance on them in the future will be that much easier. Um, fiber is not inexpensive. So you want to make sure you do your homework and you plan appropriately, and that really is the truth. Um, you know, the system's most important attribute is certainly customer service. When a customer service is needed, you want to make sure you do not overlook a vendor's ability to provide assistance. You'd be amazed with all the companies that are out there, um, how people can really help out and get you where you need to be, but you have to ask. And uh, if the company can't help you out, you know, that's understandable, but, you know, there's plenty of companies out there that are happy to do so. Um, work with those vendors that, that do uh, go the extra country mile because, you know, you'll, you'll honestly, you'll gain friends that you'll work with for a long period of time and it really won't seem like business. Um, so just some things that you want to consider. Um, so in some cases, cable management is the last topic on the mind of a network planner or a project manager or somebody in charge of getting you set up. And that happens a lot of times, unfortunately. After dealing with the transmission of a router equipment, an interconnection hardware, cable selection, installation details, and scheduling, cable management is sometimes sacrificed. Um, a lot of times it is. You know, a good cable management system will pay for itself quickly and then pay significant dividends in the long term uh, when access changes and expansion do not cause service disruption. So once again, if you set up your cable management correctly the first time, then you're not going to be looking at uh, service interruption, service disruption, and the time and money spent on a premium cable management system, don't cheap out. I'm saying that in quotations. You can't see me doing the finger bunny ears, but if you don't go the inexpensive route just to save a little money or make a little money, in the long runs that I feel will cost you and is an investment risk instead of being an investment in the network's future performance. So, you know, just some little keys there and it doesn't, like I said, whether you're on the ground floor or, or you're on uh, floor 58 in the penthouse, just some food for thought to really take into consideration. So that's the first kind of section here um, going over cable management. We're going to get into a little bit of uh, some pictures here. Once again, I'm going to go over some uh, more personal uh, um, experiences, things that I've gone through, 
on a personal basis, problems, issues that I've run into. Um, benefits of good cable management. Uh, what we're looking at here is the ease of cable connection. And when I say that, the ease of access to cables that any end devices that are connected to. So when I'm saying that is truly <clears throat> the accessibility. When you open up, you know, your your box, your RU unit, whatever it happens to be, where your your, your fiber is going into, your cat five and six is going into, how accessible is it? Are all of the fibers properly labeled? Are they all in order? Are they? Ha can you tell um, it has been a new construction? Can you tell that there's dirt that it's been there for ten years and nobody's addressed it? Um, you know, these are things that you want to address um, for a maintenance call, um, for upgrades. These are things that you want to kind of. Just some quick looks to see, okay, what am, what am I looking for here? If it's a new build, even if it's a new build, um, there, there was one time we were testing um, fiber seven and eight, and I could not find fiber seven and I could not find fiber eight. So for literally almost an hour to two hours, we're testing, we're testing. You. you sure this is right? Yes, I can't find it. I, I can't see you on the other end. So testing to me, I'm testing to the uh, tech B on the other side, and we can't, we just can't find the fiber. I say, you know what? Let me try something as crazy as this is. I say, stay on seven. I'm going to go on eight. I go and test, and lo and behold, there's, there's the fiber. I, the B tech sees me on the other side. And I, so I look, and just something so simple, here the labeling was wrong. 4,500 fibers, and 50 to 55% of the labeling was wrong. So when we would go to test 7, if you didn't see on 7, all right, put me on 8. Uh, I see you on 8, so your 7 is my 8. So then I'd have to go and relabel 8 on my side to 7 so that they would coincide and they would match. But little, little things like that, I mean, you do that enough times, just simply the relabeling, and, uh, you know, it, that's the benefits of good cable management. When things are not labeled correctly, that's what you run into. It's no different than if you go to the supermarket and, you know, you buy a piece piece of fruit and it's not labeled correctly, it's just it's the same thing you run into, except this way you're finding fiber. So, you know, if your cables are tangled, twisted, or too difficult to access, this is going to increase simple troubleshooting hours and, and time spent to fix it. I mean, a 15-minute job, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I would go to be deployed and it would take me two hours to drive to my job which I don't mind, you know, travel is part of the job, you have to travel, but it takes two hours to drive to the job, you get to the job, literally takes 15 minutes to go ahead and, and fix um, troubleshooting. Go ahead, got, got all set, good, okay, good. Knock releases you, everything's good, everything's been addressed, 15 minutes, I'm back on the road, two hour drive. So 15 minute job and it takes four hours and say 30 minutes to do and that's just from simply the travel time. If you get to one of those jobs and you run into cables that are tangled, twisted, the cable management was never considered and it was just a job kind of being thrown together, 15 minute job can possibly take hours. I don't want to say days, but I mean depending on how many fibers you're working with, it can take a very long time to find the proper fiber if they're not labeled correctly. So labeling properly can reduce additional hours spent on projects. That I can't address enough. And we'll get into color coding for cables and, and things that cost a little mo more because you have to customize, which we went over before. But um, doing it, it, it just it saves, saves time, saves money. It's, uh, you know, it's just something that's, that's extremely important. All right. Avoiding the risk of fire. I, rarely do you see this. 
Um, so I'm going to go through this part of the webinar kind of quickly, but I'm going to bring something up that was a personal experience that uh, is very, very interesting, but, um, and it's kind of funny, but it's not funny for the people that were involved. So avoid the risk of fire. It's pretty straightforward and simple, but you know, cables not under maintenance can cause sparks and start fire pretty simple and straightforward. Um, pulling, tripping, accidentally tugging, all caused by improper cable maintenance on loose or exposed fiber slash copper can also lead to potential sparks and fire. Um, so another reason, simple reason, uh, besides the connectivity, I mean if you pull on your fiber or, or yank on a connector then there's the potential that you could damage the fiber or cat five or six and that will affect your connectivity. So that's my biggest issue. That's why you want to have it properly dressed. Um, however, uh, higher risk is destroying the whole system and the fact that it could have a spark or cause a fiber. So proper slack management helps eliminate a lot of these issues. Um, slack management, I cannot address or go over more. Um, you're better off going a little longer, nine times out of ten. You can always cut back, but if your job has a pull uh, that's 1,500 feet, you might, just because of angles and critical angles and, you know, making sure that you don't... Uh, damage fiber or the cat five or six, you may want to go an extra hundred feet. You know, do you need to? No. Do you want to do it to make sure that, you know, you're going to reach both ends? 100% uh, yes, because what are you going to do if you end up being, you know, five feet short? You know, so proper slack management really help, helps to eliminate a lot of those issues. Um, a lot of jobs that I've been working on, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, or have worked on in the past, um, they like to have 5 to 15 feet of slack, additional slack um, for uh, additional, uh, you know, fibers. It's something that they just happen to like it for whether if it happens to be spares, whether if it's, you know, just excess uh, fiber on one end, they like to have that because if you have to splice and cut back, um, then you're going to be cutting back on that. Hopefully you don't have to do that too many times, but that's why they usually like some, you know, some proper uh, extended um, slack management there. All right, this is a, in my opinion, a kind of funny picture. It's kind of why I have scary in the left-hand corner here, but what I'm being absolutely honest. This is uh, this this is a fully functioning server. I mean, this there. I can't tell you how many times I've come to jobs to do a simple 15-minute job, and this is what you run into. Uh, one thing that I want to highly suggest: techs or even project managers. Uh, if project manager you're not there, hey, guess what? Text project managers, have your text, take the picture, text, take the picture yourself. This is a cover your behind uh, you know, country, um, and it's better to be safe than sorry. If you come to a job and have to perform maintenance or uh, do a retrofit or reinstall, you want to document this is what you're walking into. Um, yeah, this is a fire hazard, and this is dangerous, but if you look, you can see the light. These are fully illuminated, and this is a fully working system. And you're seeing less and less of this just because of government regulations. But in all honesty, this is uh, you can see this. This is by far one of the worst I've run, I've run into. But uh, you will you will run into these for some older uh, older service. When you have wires like this, not, I mean, like I said before, yes, it is a fire hazard. It's clearly a fire hazard, but this is really a maintenance nightmare or a retrofit nightmare. We had 208 jobs like this last summer that we had to do 
with a carrier um, that is a uh, well-respected carrier, um, but we ran into this time and time again. And uh, simple jobs that would take half a day at best, we'd be going back to two days later, three days later. And everybody uh, ends up losing out um, you know, money-wise. So uh, areas that this maintenance nightmare really <laughs> kill you on is time. You know, you, you're, you're out working on these jobs. Um, outages, obviously you can imagine uh, this may not be the highest, fastest functioning connective, um, you know, uh, server here. Slower speeds, higher costs, obviously, because you're going to have somebody coming out uh, trying to fix a, uh, a you know, a, a put the old finger in the dam sort of solution here. Um, and here's the thing, it, when your system goes down, you have to have it back up. You, you can't work your business without having your system up and running. Um, for a new install last year, um, one of the subcontracted companies, it was not our company, but it was somebody uh, that was also um, subcontracted to work with one of the uh, big wireless carriers. One of the gentlemen, they went, they did a reinstall, um, pulled, I believe it was 450 feet of new fiber in Cat 5. Um, they properly dressed it, they properly maintained it, Slack management was functioning and working well. The building that they were working on uh, housed attorneys, real estate agents, and mortgage brokers. Um, they all shared in this building and there was about, I believe, 45 employees in that building. Uh, high net worth client. Long story short, uh, it was in the summer. Uh, one of the techs left a so soda bottle on a, uh, a server. It overheated. The soda bottle exploded, and what it did was that soda then uh, trickled down into the system and shorted the whole system so that whole building was out, was without service, um, phone, um, internet, and uh, so basically they couldn't do business. So um, sloppiness, being a little bit of a piggy, you don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, not only with a soda bottle, uh, but also with uh, you know your fiber and your your uh, your cable maintenance, something you just don't want to do, and uh, especially when when we're dealing with uh, um, you know th these type of maintenance nightmares. Convenient troubleshooting, routine troubleshooting, data centers, towers, hub stations, etc. Messy and unorganized cable make simple, quick, efficient troubleshooting a nightmare. Let me repeat that. Messy and unorganized cables make simple, quick, efficient troubleshooting a nightmare. It makes it an impossibility. If everything is organized, labeled, colored correctly, then your troubleshooting will be a breeze. Um, most universities, hospitals, you're not going to run into these types of things. They just won't have it. They, they can't have it. A job that could, should, would take you 15 minutes can take hours and hours trying to locate a simple cable. Color codes are key. I always encourage to go with color cables, color code, but there's a higher cost for that. So, you know, those are all things that you want to consider. All right, we are getting close towards the tail end of our webinar here. So I want to make sure that I save some time for questions at the end. Um, right here is proper and good cable management, good Slack management. If you look at this particular from tray to tray, you can see multicolored cable, whether that's fiber or that's the Cat5. You know, so density versus space here, you can see that there's plenty of room 
if they want to go with additional fiber, it's all dressed. Velcro to keep some of that pressure and strain off of it to keep it not too tight. Cat 5 and Cat 6 you're going to have a lot easier time with simply because it's, it doesn't have, if you, you nick uh, Cat 5 or Cat 6, you're not going to have the issues you would with fiber. Always you want to make sure if you're working in indoor, then use indoor. If you're working outdoor, use outdoor. Is that going to be armored if it's outdoor? Is it going to be what type of temperatures are you going to be dealing with? Is it going to be aerial? Is it going to be burial? You know, those, those are things that you want to look into. Cost clearly is a factor. I see people nine times out of ten just to win the bids. They will go cheaper on the products they purchase and to save more on the back end. And what that ends up doing is that ends up, uh, you'll win the bid, but, you know, will you win it? going forward for future jobs if, uh, you know, if, if the client's not satisfied with what's put in. A lot of times clients require specific, um, for specific jobs like universities, hospitals, certain companies, uh, they want certain fibers set to their standards and specifications. Um, then another reason, sometimes your hand is forced to win a bid. Um, the only available fiber that is there is sometimes the lesser costs in fiber or the unarmored fiber or you the only part of this bid you know this is a quarter of your year and uh, they don't have armored fiber and I need outdoor and all they have is indoor so I'm gonna you know you, you try and make do um, I'm not telling you to not you know win bids you know continue doing that and, and take some of the cable management uh, tutelage you've learned here and apply it but um, you know, I understand you fully got to make money. I'm just simply saying, take into consideration sometimes spending a little more uh, product-wise, especially fiber, uh, will save you a lot more and make you more money in the long run. Wall mounting, um, you know, I wanted to address and, and go in to slightly. Um, if you look here, this is actually I didn't say proper wall mounting, although this I, I really do enjoy. Um, I think that this is uh, an exceptionally good wall mounting job. As you can see, um, trying to keep the pressure off of some of the Cat5 and the fiber actually in its own armored tubing here. Um, Velcro around, you can see. Uh, load bearing for additional fiber or cat5 that's going to be coming through or uh, um, but the the one thing that uh, some companies do not like and are getting away from is the zip ties they they won't allow you uh, to use them I love zip ties but with fiber you have to be very very careful and sometimes that pressure will you know affect the connectivity and, and uh, speed and connection. Um, heat is also something you want to take into consideration. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are spread out well um, because they do get hot. So you know, if, if they're all bundled together, um, you know, there's always going to be additional uh, heat there. So that's something that you want to take into consideration. Heat is always bad for fiber or Cat six. Heat's usually bad for almost everything, but uh, you know, it just uh, can damage depending on the type of uh, armor coating if there is any for the fiber that, that can uh, damage them. Um, here's some suggestions for cable management. There are four main areas to cover for uh, proper cable, cable management that you always want to consider. Um, airflow, dust. Dust is the devil. Dust is evil. Um, you want to keep uh, your fiber and your cable management clean, as clean as you possibly can. Um, that also leads to uh, fires. Uh, obviously, any dirt on your fiber will affect its connectivity. Um, having a neat appearance, just simply going back to uh, this uh, cable management here in Slack management, as you can see, it, it, it looks it just immaculate. It looks pristine. It looks clean. It looks the way um, a tray should be set up. 
um, it looks exactly how um, the fiber should truly look. The only issue I have here is simply the zip ties, and that's just simply some companies, like I said, they you know they would stress to use uh, uh, Velcro here. Um, but so neat appearance um, when. Installing your cable management, it sounds so simple for me to even say or to come out of my mouth, but use proper tools. That's something that you uh, want to definitely do. The reason why I bring that up is because if you use the wrong tool, um, LC, SC, you, you have to have the right, right tool. You don't want to go and damage uh, your product or your client's product. Scotty's hottie tip of the webby. The reason why I bring this up is Scott is somebody that I happen to work with, someone that I respect. He has been working in the telecom industry for over 15 years. He is an IT wizard, uh, worked with uh, numerous Fortune 500 companies, and by far is a brain. Um, but overall, he's a nice guy and is always to help, happy to help you out uh, if you're ever in a pickle or if you need help with project management, IT, or even if you go and lock yourself out with your password. He's happy to help you out with that. But Scotty always gives me a tip no matter what. So the Scotty Hottie tip of the Webby is organization, written process, and do not be a piggy. You don't want to be a piggy, so you want to have proper slack and cable management, and you do not want to run into this. So the Scotty Hottie tip of the Webby or of this week is organization, written process, and he always says, don't be a pig. Clean up after yourself. If you're doing splicing and uh, you have to cut fiber, even the little fiber shards, and just a little... Uh, I would, it would drive me nuts when I would just see people splicing and they go do a good splice but then they just take the fiber, they just flick it right off the cleaver and, and there it would go and it would hit the ground. And in my head I would just say to myself, why can't you just take that fiber and put that in a box? Some little kid could walk by, uh, say, heck, anybody could walk by and if anybody's had fiber in their finger or in any part of their body, it's not a pleasant thing and it's borderline impossible to get out. So don't be a pig, and that's definitely with your Slack and cable management. Quick recap. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not going over too far, uh, too far here uh, for cable management and review. Um, create the correct man cable management system and set up for yourself. Um, do it right the first time. And what you're going to do is you're going to save yourself money and make yourself money much more in the long run. So four of the main areas to address when correctly setting up a cable management system are you want to adapt to change, uh, maximize the protection, which is key, the ease of use, customize, customize, customize. Every job is different, so you have to set it and, and fix it the way you like and customize it the way yourself and your client likes. And then you have to have the customer service. You have to be there for the client afterwards, uh, after it's installed or, you know, if you're, you're dealing with the maintenance aspect. So cleaning, cost, and connectivity. I always say the three C's. They're going to equal you the most cash, cleaning, cost, and connectivity. Just came in, I apologize, right at one hour. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or the training staff here at fiberoptic.com. Um, of course, this was a training webinar. We also offer training in-house throughout the country and across the world. So if you're in California, if you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in Dubai um, and you're needing some training, we're happy to help you out with that. Uh, I'm not right now currently seeing any questions. Oh, here comes one. Uh, do we sell products? Yes, we do sell products. Um, I'm not going to be an infomercial here and kind of pound the drum on uh, to come through us and, and to deal with us directly, but we would be happy to help you out with a quote anytime. Um, we deal with all companies out there, so 
um, no matter who you have a favorite of, we're happy to help you out with that. Um, you know, so one to thank everybody for coming out. Um, once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to zip it out to training at fiberoptic.com and either myself or somebody else on our staff will be happy to uh, help you out with that. So you can tell I'm happy to sit here and squawk on the horn uh, anytime. So you can also give me a call anytime to reach out. Um, wanted to thank you and uh, let, really let you know we appreciate you joining us again and look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, 3 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. Make it a great day.